Hello, dear students. This is your engineering mathematics free lecture. Today's topic is applications of Laplace transform. This is the last topic from second unit. Applications of Laplace transform. We can solve the differential equation using Laplace transform. This is the use of Laplace transform. Let's see the example. Solve dy by dt plus 2 into y of t plus integration of 0 to t y of t dt is equal to sine t. This is the differential equation and we want the solution for this differential equation. Now, one of the term is integral term here. So, in first term there is a derivative term. Middle term of simple function y of t is given. And in third term the integration term is there integral is there so if we are to solve this differential equation then we have to use laplace transform means using laplace transform you can solve this differential equation now how to solve it given y of 0 is equal to 1 this initial condition is given yeah. that y of 0 is 1 so in the value of t is 1 the value of y is the function y is 1 here that is the mean and see, you know that Laplace transform of y of t is equal to y of s because we know that Laplace transform of f of t, small f, f of t is equal to f of s, like that Laplace transform of y of t is equal to y of s. Laplace transform of dy by dt, derivative term, it is equal to s into y of s minus y of 0 is equal to, now y of 0, the value of y of 0 is given, it is 1, so you put here 1. This value is for only this example. For the other example, it may be, uh, it may vary. Y of 0 may be another value. So for this example only, y of 0 is 1. Okay. And Laplace of dy by dt, Laplace of derivative term, using the property Laplace of derivative term, it is equal to s into y of s minus y of 0. It is s into y of s minus 1. Laplace transform of integral property, integration over 0 to t, y of t, dt is equal to 1 upon s into y of s. Because Laplace transform of y, means y of t is y of s, and using the integral property, you just divide the function y of s by s. This is the Laplace transform of integral property. Laplace transform of sine t, the coefficient of angle, sine function angle is 1 here. So it is equal to 1 upon s square plus 1. Laplace transform of sine t is 1 upon s square plus 1. Using the formula, Laplace transform of transform of some standard function. Now, taking Laplace transform on both sides of the given differential equation. This is the given differential equation. You take Laplace transform on both sides, and it is nothing but Laplace of dy by dt plus Laplace transform of 2 into y of t plus Laplace transform of integration over 0 to t y of dt is equal to 1 upon s square plus 1. Laplace transform of sine t is 1 upon s square plus 1. Now Laplace transform of dy by dt is here s into y of s minus 1 plus Laplace transform of 2 into y of t, two constant Laplace transform of y of t is here y of s, you write y of s plus Laplace transform of integration over 0 to t y of t dt is here y of s upon s is equal to 1 upon s square plus 1. Okay. Now simplify the term. Now in denominator there is the term s in last term y of s upon s. To remove this s from denominator you multiply every term by s here or you collect the terms of y of s first here s plus 2 plus 1 by s bracket complete into y of s because y of s is common in these three terms. Minus 1 is here separate. So that minus 1 is here missing. So there is one correct term. Here. The term is minus 1 
plus minus one plus remaining three terms y of s is common so take it common and the addition of uh, that three terms where y of s is common s plus two plus one by s is equal to one upon s square plus two. now shift this minus one here in rhs so that you will get the term this uh, bracket term s plus two plus one by s into y of s as it is which is equal to one plus one upon s square plus one then y of s is equal to here y of s is equal to you simplify the terms here in lhs you take the lcm s and multiply every term by s except the third one it is s square plus 2s plus 1 upon s into y of s is equal to 1 plus 1 upon s square plus 1 so if we here the value of y of s is here after simplification s upon s square plus 2s plus 1 plus s upon s square plus 2s plus 1 into another bracket s square plus 1. You simplify this term, you will get this term. Okay. So just the rearrangement of terms. Nothing else. Now, y of s is equal to, now the first term is s upon s square plus 2 s plus 1. s square plus 2 s plus 1 is the perfect square, so we can write it as s plus 1 whole square. But in numerator, the term is s. So you write the term s in the form of s plus 1. Now, how to write the term in numerator in the form of s plus 1? We can write it like this s plus 1 minus 1 upon s plus 1 whole square plus Second term, s upon s square plus 2s plus 1 into another bracket s square plus 1. Now you separate these two terms. How to separate these two terms? It's just a rearrangement. You write 1 upon s square plus 1 minus 1 upon s square plus 2s plus 1. If we do the cross multiplication, we have the term in the form of 2s upon s square plus 2s plus 1 into s square plus 1. 2s, but in original term it is s. So multiply and divide the term by two. So here it is 1 by 2 into 1 upon s square plus 1 minus 1 upon s square plus 2 s plus 1. So we can write this complete term s upon s square plus 2 s plus 1 in another bracket s square plus 1 like this. 1 upon s square plus 1 minus 1 upon s square plus 2 s plus 1. After cross multiplication, to simplify, you will get the same term here. Okay. Now y of s is equal to next step, y of s is equal to, now the first term s plus 1 minus 1 upon s plus 1 whole square. The s is every, s is displaced in the form of s plus 1. So using or separating the numerators here, s plus 1 upon s plus 1 whole square, we have the term 1 upon s plus 1 minus 1 upon s plus 1 whole square. Separate these two terms plus 1 by 2 as it is. 1 by 2 into 1 upon s square plus 1 minus 1 by 2 into 1 upon s square plus 2 s plus 1. s square plus 2 s plus 1 is nothing but whole perfect square s plus 1 whole square. So write it right here s plus 1 whole square. Okay. Now this is the value of y of s. Now taking inverse Laplace transform. Taking inverse Laplace transform on both sides, we get L inverse means lap, inverse Laplace transform of y of s is equal to inverse Laplace transform of 1 upon s plus 1 minus inverse Laplace transform of s plus 1 whole square plus 1 by 2 constant, inverse Laplace transform of 1 upon s square plus 1 minus 1 by 2, inverse Laplace transform of 1 upon s plus 1 whole square. So inverse Laplace transform of y of s is nothing but y of t okay, by the definition of Laplace transform. It is equal to what is inverse Laplace transform of 1 upon s plus 1? It is e raised to minus t by using the inverse Laplace transform of some standard function formula. Minus inverse Laplace transform of 1 upon s plus 1 whole square. Now s is displaced by s plus 1. So first you use the shifting property. So it is e raised to minus t into inverse Laplace of inverse Laplace transform of 1 upon s square. 
inverse Laplace transform of 1 upon s square is 3 upon 1 factorial. So it is the inverse Laplace transform e raised to minus 3 into 3 upon 1 factorial plus 1 by 2 as it is. What is the inverse Laplace transform of 1 upon s square plus? It is sine t upon 1. So it is 1 by 2 as it is sine t upon 1 means sine t minus 1 by 2. What is the inverse Laplace transform of 1 upon s plus 1 whole square? It is again using the shifting property. It is e raised to minus t because s is displaced in the form of s plus 1. So like this second term, you can write the inverse Laplace transform of last term e raised to minus t into t upon 1 factorial. Okay. And you just simplify it. It is e raised to minus t. That first second term and last term e raised to minus t into t common minus 1 minus half minus 3 by 2 and 1 factorial its value is 1. So addition of second and fourth term is minus 3 by 2 into e raised to minus t into t first term as it is and this third term 1 by 2 sin t as it is. So this is your answer. This is the solution of the differential equation. Y of t is equal to e raised to minus t plus 1 by 2 into sin t minus t by 2 into e raised to minus t into t. This is the solution for the given differential equation. We have solved the differential equation using Laplace transform. First, we take Laplace transform on both sides and then using the properties of Laplace transform, we find the Laplace transform of every term. And then we have the function y of s. After finding y of s, we take inverse Laplace transform on both sides for the equation. And after taking inverse Laplace transform, we have the value of function y of t. And that value of function y of t is nothing but your solution of the differential equation. Okay. Similarly, you can solve these equations. You need to keep, take these examples as a homework. Solve y double dash y double dash means second derivative of y minus p y dash y dash means derivative of y y double dash minus p y dash plus two y is equal to twelve e raised to minus two t initial condition is given here y of zero is two second example y double dash plus two y dash plus y is equal to t into e raised to minus t y of zero is equal to one so these are the differential equations using the plus transform you can solve these differential equations that is the use of Laplace transform. While solving the differential equation, we have to use both the transform, Laplace transform as well as inverse Laplace transform to find the solution of differential equation. So this is the application of Laplace transform. Here, this topic application of Laplace transform, application of applications of Laplace transform to Applications of Laplace transform to find the solution of differential equation is over here. And this unit is also over here. Thank you.